here and you're going to take your little brush and load it up, okay, so that you can get a nice flat load. Most flowers start with five petals, so here's your five petals. And we start like this, see? That makes a Y, and then in between, here comes another one, right there. There's your, your petals, all right? Now you just widen the petals out a little bit to fill the space. Remember to make that painting as smooth as you can. That means laying the brush down flat, nice and flat and even, so that you get that nice, flat, even stroke. Okay, there you go. There's your flat, even strokes. You got five petals. Now we're gonna take the synthetic brush and we're going to take that, where is that synthetic that we had now? Oh, here he is. Here he is. We're gonna take that synthetic brush. This is when it becomes very popular, right about now, because you're thinking now where the light is hitting that flower. It's hitting right here at the top of the flower. We're going to wipe out that color and notice how much it'll pick up even if you wipe out that, that brush and you don't put any oil on it or anything. You're just wiping out the brush so that you leave a little highlight in there. See that? There's your highlight. This one, you'll take some highlight from here and leave this little bit right here. Because now we're going to take the rubber pick and I'll show you what you can do with a rubber pick. You can draw with it. You come around the edge of that like so. You bring, bring this back or you can take the point end of your wipeout tool and you can do the same thing. Look at that. See that how, how much more it takes out when you use a wipeout tool? Much more, doesn't it? Now you take the synthetic brush and you're going to soften that highlight so that it's not quite so bright. There you go. You're going to have another one right in here, another highlight. Synthetic brushes, great for highlights. You don't want all the color wiped off. You don't put the color on there so you can wipe it all off. You just want to take part of it out. And you want to take some out in the middle. In the middle, you're going to take that wipeout tool and you're going to take the point end of your wedge and you're going to make these little things in the middle. Okay, there they are. You'll use this little five petal shape for berries and, and other fruits and things like that when you have little blossoms. You use it for wild roses, you use it for forget-me-nots, you use it for just about every flower that there is with the exception of well, even the cluster flowers, you have to use a five petal flower. So it's something that's very basic, okay? Now you're going to push into that middle just a little bit and reshape that outer petal like so. And maybe you'll take a little bit in here and a little bit in here and bring this one in just a little bit, maybe. Reshape your petals to the shape that you want. Maybe take a little dip into your petals so that it looks like it's kind of ruffled just a little bit. Okay. The wedge end of that, uh, that wipeout tool is gonna become invaluable to you.
You'll be able to do all kinds of things with that wedge, okay? Your liner brush can be in for details if you want to use that liner brush, or you can use, again, you can use that little scroller, that little tiny scroller, that really small scroller. Get a darker value, like a violet of iron, you know, red violet of iron. Take that down into the center and push around some of these little things in the middle. Like so. This is just to get the idea of the little details that you can do. You can take some uh, red red and you can come down in there with some violet of iron and red red and you can make a dark area right down in the center of that flower, okay? We'll pull that toward the center like so to make it a little bit more interesting. That's what you do with these little tiny brushes like this. Now, you don't have to use tiny brushes if you don't want to. Some people don't like them. Some people like to use big brushes, and that's fine too. There's not, you can't say that it's wrong if you find that it, there is success. The only time you say that it's wrong is if they're not making any headway and they keep doing the same thing over and over again. All right? All right. Okay. So far, this is what your little flower looks like. If you're going to make a stronger highlight. I mean, you want, might want it to be a pinker a flower, you know, a lighter color. You can actually put a little of this, take that little wipeout tool, like so, and you can make little ruffles in your flower by just pushing from the inside to the outside edge. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Does that make sense so far? It starts to have a little bit more character when you start adding these little pieces of, of texture. Okay. Okay. Now, if you have an area where it gets too harsh, you take your synthetic brush and just soften it by running along the edges a little bit. And then come back and get a little bit more off of that flower. Here is our little flower so far. Okay. All right, now if you need to get down into the area where your flower is coming together with the background, you can take this small brush that we talked about here, this little um, number four, and you can take a little bit of blue or a little bit of blue-green, and you can come down into that area and you can make your comma stroke to come right in there like this. 
Remember, you have to stay away from the color because if you get that color mixed in, you'll create something that we call mud, okay? You want to keep the color as pure as possible. Let's get some of this Sultan. Okay. Come down into there with that. See how that small brush gets in there? It just gets down in there a little bit and then you start to work it out. This method is also called filtering or feathering. Something that we don't do an awful lot of these days, but in the old days, that was a very popular method. There you go. And you don't use just one color. Quite often, the colors are switched around so that you get other colors in there. This is a tan. This is my, one of my favorites for a yellow because it's very versatile and, and it's one you can see on the china pretty easily, okay? We're gonna turn it just a little bit so you can take a look at this and see what happens when you add the yellow to the background. If you get a little bit of yellow into it, or red, yellow red, I should say, if you get some of the red into it, it's going to make it yellow red. It's going to make a, a kind of an orangey color and it will not be necessarily disturbing depending on whether or not you wanted it to be that way. Because if you don't want it to be orange, then you're not going to like it. Understand that you're going to be putting that color on in a couple of different places so that it makes uh, for better design. It's called color spotting. Um, you're going to take that color. You've got, you've got a little bit of color here, a little bit of color here and here. Now turn it around <clears throat> and put a little bit of color right in here and see what happens. This is a much better, much more pleasing arrangement than if you just left the two yellow spots and you have left all the blue at the top. You need to have that little bit of versatility, a little bit of movement there, something that attracts a little bit more attention and adds to the color that's already been placed onto the piece. Okay? This color can be incorporated in your leaves at another time. This shows you how, though, that you can use those different brushes that you've used. The only one we haven't used is the larger brush, which is your three-quarter inch. And the three-quarter inch is usually used for a lot of background. You know, like you're covering a piece this whole size or bigger. And you're just painting all this color all over it. Usually wet grounding is a good time to use those big brushes like that. And that's a whole different story. But now you know how to work with your brushes, your rubber picks, your wipeout tool, and you know that you're going to have these paints that are going to be mixed with your brush by just working your brush into the paints. You can mix some of these, brush, these colors in your brush, like I was showing you, or you can paint um, wet on wet, or you can choose to paint something that is um, that has been fired and then you paint over the top of it, giving it a new effect. But whatever you do, be very careful about how you are applying your paint, especially if it's wet on wet. Wet on wet is tricky. I recommend for beginners that you do not do wet on wet painting, but instead do most of your painting on fired surfaces. You'll have a much better result. In time, you can do wet on wet and you'll understand how to use your brushes and your oils a little better. Okay?